Our daily routine usually starts with a glass of Jamaica or chocolate powder milk on ice when we're overindulging. This morning, we woke up at Isla San Marcos to the sound of an English-speaking voice calling another vessel named Varuna on the VHF. We moved towards the reef at the northern end of the island and began drying some berilete, or red meat tuna fish. Pepper and salt, that's it. Put them up in the sun first thing. The decay of coral and marine life here in the Sea of Cortez has been something we're constantly discussing here on SV Rosa. Basically the ecosystem has been a lot healthier than uh, we have expected and uh, that has been really good news. It's been a good thing since it's been our main source of food for the last six months. Uh, random spots have been uh, better than we have expected and some spots have been a little bit less rich in life, a little bit more brown and dead. So pretty much our feeling is that uh, currents really affect the health of areas. Some spots that look a little bit healthier are the areas that experience a little more current yeah, and a cool water coming experience in. Experience updrafts or upwells of, of colder water that counteract the effects of very warm water. Damage here in the Sea of Cortez of coral and reef is not really like some other experiences we've had in other places in the world where, for example, uh, if a boat comes in and dumps down its anchor and, and literally physically crushes a reef or yeah. it, it hasn't looked like there's been a lot of bleaching here, for example. It's a different kind of damage here. I think yeah. that it may not be that kind of physical kind of damage to marine ecosystems. It's a different kind where for example, we don't see any sharks. Yeah, we've seen, I've seen, uh, I think, one shark since I've been here. It was small and he looked afraid. <laughs> the sure sign that, uh, that it's shark finning going on for sure is that there's more than just uh, sharks and shark carcasses coming off of those boats, but uh, also boxes of shark fins that we've seen. Yeah. And there's definitely more fins coming off of the boats than there are the sharks themselves. Another uh, fishing practice that's common around here that takes a toll on the environment or well, on the ecosystem is um, you see them at night is the, the hooker fishermen. They fish with compressors or dive bottles, but mostly dive compressors. A lot of reef fish asleep at night. It's it's they fall. The easy prey for them to be just shoved in a bag. So we want to see a happy, healthy marine ecosystems wherever we go. It directly affects us. Um, we're sustaining ourselves by eating fish here on Espirosa. When we arrived at the northern end of Isla San Marcos, we met up with Hector and Bonnie aboard their catamaran, as well as Hilary and Ty aboard Veruna. The area was pretty murky, but had many little caves to explore. Whenever we see a bit of plastic in the water, we try to bring it to the next harbor and to a garbage bin. Uh, what, what, what are they called? Lost boys? Yeah, you look like a lost boy. <laughs> yeah, pretty solid. Robbie caught a small yellowtail right next to our boat, perfect for our sushi dinner. The ingredients for making sushi are great on a boat. They're easy to store, even without a refrigerator, like the dried wasabi powder, dried seaweed, soy sauce, and bottled ginger. We had an unopened jar of mayonnaise, mixed that with chili sauce and garlic powder. And even after a week without fresh vegetables, this head of lettuce was quite salvageable.
still has the fa the mask, signs of wearing his uh, dive mask, and he's about to eat the fish he caught. With the help of our friend Scott, we have been slowly building up our collection of dive gear. Robbie took this chance to go test out what we have with Hector, Ty, and Hillary. I told him to go film what he saw and let me know how the reef is doing at a depth of about 50 feet. At this depth, there was a little bit more soft coral, and the sea lions seemed to dig the dive bubbles too. It was so great to share this anchorage with these nice folks. We made some tasty fish fritters with the night fish, and then we headed for Santa Rosalia. The Dorados always seem to hit the red and white hoochies during our windless passages, when the water is most calm. We've kept them all to eat, as their delicate little mouths seem to always rip open very easily. But none of them go to waste. As we began sun drying the eggs, we shared with our neighbors upon arrival in the harbor. We eventually met up with Ty and Hillary again in Santa Rosalia, and they had this good tip about a real cool place to hang out during the heat of the day, the library. The town of Santa Rosalia is also pretty funky. It's in a little bit of disrepair, but very charming regardless. Kind of the same way I feel about marine ecosystems, I guess. The dilapidation only seems to drive us to explore more. A huge crumbling foundry near the center of town is completely unrestricted, with locals using the place for shade and shelter, even though it looks like it could come down on someone's head at any moment. Paintball arena here. Like the ultimate paintball. There's no way you can make any of this safe, Robbie. <laughs> Freaking creepy ass place. I found it to be kind of classically post-apocalyptic, a great setting for a grim future world movie or game. This is what they were smelting. 
can feel it's quite heavy for me. Oh. Here in the harbor, there is a small ferry that crosses the Sea of Cortes to Wyamas. It comes in very early in the morning, every couple of days, and blows the horn to wake up the town. Giant concrete block just exactly smack dab in the middle of the, of the harbor, like prime anchoring spot. You can sort of an exposed corner like that. <laughs> Another good reminder of why not to enter harbors at night around here. Most evenings we would look east towards the Chabascos forming out on the sea, wondering if they would eventually make it here. They never did, although we watched closely as something else formed south of us. But in the meantime, our drying fish and dorado eggs became a nice solid jerky. A little bit of olive oil and some crackers made it a quick and easy snack. The dried fish with the olive oil in the jar made an easy bruschetta with tomatoes, fresh cilantro, and garlic later on. Also a necessity here in Baja for us has been Jamaica. We brew it like any old other tea, but we seldom drink it hot. After letting it steep for a day or a night, making it nice and tart, we strain it, sometimes adding a couple of teaspoons of sugar, and serve it over ice whenever possible. And we kept on dreaming of all the destinations that lay ahead. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can become a Patreon or leave a tip through PayPal in the links below. Holy dangerous, Batman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, school kid doesn't fall down in like...